Hi everybody, my name is Kate and welcome to another Saturday session with exam revision. So today we're going to be looking at the topic of algebra for junior cycle higher level maths. Okay, so we all know how important algebra is for all chapters on the junior cycle course. So it's really important that we're able to master our knowledge of algebra. So today we're going to look at quite a bit. So we're going to start by looking at simplifying expressions and solving equations. Then we'll move on to factorising and we'll finish up with fractions. Okay, I know fractions is an area of the course that people tend to qu find quite challenging. So we're going to spend a bit of time working through fractions, um, how to write them out in a way that I guess might help our understanding of them a little bit. Okay, so we're going to divide the section, this session up into two sections. So we'll start with simplifying and solving, then we'll move on to factorising and then fractions. And then at the end, we'll look at some exam questions. That will give you a really good idea of how questions have come up in the past and also how they're likely to come up again in the future. So the first thing we're going to look at is simplifying expressions. OK, so the question in the exam will just say simplify. Now, these are quite basic examples. They'll probably come up a little bit more tricky than this, but it's important we get the basics first. So over on the right hand side here, we have some key rules. OK, so you can only add or subtract terms if they're exactly the same. So x and x squared are not the same. So if you see x and x squared, you cannot add them together. OK, so the letters need to be exactly the same or the variables need to be exactly the same. So x and x squared aren't the same. Y and y cubed aren't the same. OK, so the powers must also be the same to add or subtract them. If there's no number in front of the variable, you can write a one there. So if you have the variable, uh, we can call say x, okay? If it helps, you can write a one in front of it, okay? So if there is no letter in front or no number in front of the letter, you can just write a number. The number there is one, okay? Usually we don't write it, but if it helps you with adding and subtracting, then put it in there, okay? And then finally, when adding variables with the same power, the power doesn't change. So if we have, we'll say x squared plus um, 5x squared. Okay, I'm going to do what I set up here in rule number two. I'm going to put a one there just to help me add. So one plus five is six x squared. Okay, sometimes people think that you add the powers as well. We don't. Okay, so when you're adding, leave the power alone. Okay, so now we're going to look at the four examples here. So 3x plus 7x plus 2x. The 3x and the 2x have the same letters with them so I can add them. So that'll be 5x plus 7. Okay, nothing more I can do with that. That's that equation simplified. Okay, next one a little bit trickier. We have 5x squared plus 1x squared. So in total we have 6x squared, we have 9x, and we have minus 7. Okay, the next one we have 2a squared minus 4a squared. 2 minus 4, you can put that into calculator if you're not sure, it'll be minus 2a squared. Then we also have 4a minus 5a. 4a minus 5a is minus 1a. Okay, you don't have to write the 1. And then we've minus 5 plus 7. Minus 5 plus 7 will give me plus 2. Okay, be careful with the minuses. Put those into your calculator and it will tell you. Okay, and then finally down here, we have 5y to the power of 4. We have another y to the power of 4 over here. So we have 5 plus 3. That'll be 8y to the power of 4 plus 7y squared. Okay, so they're all simplified. There's nothing more you can do with them. Now, from multiplying brackets and simplifying them, we the second you see a bracket, we want to get rid of it. We get rid of it by multiplying, okay? So our key rules over here on the right, to multiply an algebra, multiply the numbers first and then the letters. So if I have, let's say three multiplied by two y, multiply the numbers, that will give me six and we still have our y there, okay? If I have um, three x multiplied by five y, sorry, by five x, Multiply the numbers, that'd be 15, and then x by x is x squared. Okay, key rule down here, x multiplied by x is x squared, x multiplied by x squared is x cubed. Okay, so they are super important, you need to learn those off by heart. So x by x is x squared, x by x squared is x cubed. Okay, same for y by y is y squared, or a by a is a squared, a by a squared is a cubed. Okay. When multiplying into a bracket, you multiply everything in the back up by the term on the outside separately. So if I have 2 by 3x plus 7, okay, I'm going to multiply 2 by the 3x and the 2 by the 7. Okay, that will give me 6x plus 
14. Okay, nothing more I can do with that. I can't add them, okay, because they don't both have the same variable or the same letter. So that's that finished, okay. And then when multiplying two brackets by each other, write down the second bracket twice and split up the first bracket. So a quick example there would be 3x plus 2 and 1x minus 3, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to write down the second bracket twice and split up the first bracket. Okay, and then you'd multiply it out from there. Okay, now we'll see some examples of those in a second. Okay, so they're your key rules. They're the bits you kind of need to learn. Now we'll put that to practice. So for the first one here. Now, after a bit of practice, you can stop writing it out like this. Okay, it depends what way your teacher does, does it as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply the 3 by the 2x squared. Okay, and then I'll multiply the 3 by the 7x. Okay, that will give me 6x squared, so 3 by 2 is 6, and then 3 by 7 is 21x. Again, can't add those together, remember, can't add x squareds and x's, okay? After a bit of practice, you can start to skip this line, okay? Um, but it's a good idea to draw in your arrows, it's still a good idea to show your work. I think you're less likely to make a mistake by writing it out, and it only takes a couple of seconds. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. So we'll do this by this, by the second term, and by the third term. So we have 2y multiplied by 3y squared, minus 2y multiplied by minus 7y, sorry, plus 2y multiplied by minus 7y, plus 2y multiplied by 6. So here, we're going back to our key rules on the right. So to multiply 2y by 3y squared, we're going to multiply the numbers first, okay? 2 multiplied by 3 will give me 6, and y multiplied by y squared will give me y cubed, Okay? Next one we have 2y multiplied by minus 7y. 2 by minus 7 is minus 14, okay? Why? Because a positive multiplied by a negative is a negative. Um, two positives multiplied together are positive, and two negatives multiplied together is a positive as well, okay? You can check that in your calculator anyway. You could put in 2 multiplied by minus 7. It would give you out minus 14. And then we have y multiplied by y, which would give me y squared. And then we have 2y multiplied by 6. 2 by 6 would be 12. Okay, again, that's my final answer. Can't simplify that any further. Okay, example three then when we have two brackets. We'll just deal with them both separately and then we'll simplify at the end. So we're going to have 3a multiplied by 6a and then plus 3a multiplied by 7. Then we have minus 1 multiplied by 5a and then minus 1 again multiplied by minus 3. Okay, now to simplify, so, well, to finish multiplying out first, so we have 3 multiplied by 6, which should give me 18, and a multiplied by a is a squared, plus we have 3 multiplied by 7, which is 21a, then minus 1 by 5a will be minus 5a, and minus 1 by minus 3, be careful, two minuses make a positive, so that'll be plus 3. I can actually simplify this a little bit, so that'll be 18a squared, 21a minus 5a, that'll be plus 16a plus three. And that's our final answer there. Now we're getting on to the last rule I was talking about over there on the right. We have two brackets being multiplied by each other. Okay. Easiest way to do it, we're going to write down the second bracket twice. So that'll be 2x plus one, leave a bit of a space, 2x plus one, and split up the first bracket. So the 3x will go there and the minus seven will go there. So in my head, I'm always saying write down the second bracket twice and split up the first bracket. Okay. And now we're just going to multiply. So it'll be 3x by 2x, plus 3x by 1. Okay, so that by that, and that by that. And then we have minus 7 multiplied by 2x, minus 7 multiplied by 1. This here, 2x or 3x multiplied by 2x, that's going to give me 6x. 3x multiplied by 1 will give me 3x. Minus 7 multiplied by 2x will be minus 14x. And then minus 7 multiplied by 1 will be minus 7. Now I can simplify this. So 6 plus 3 gives me 9, minus 14 gives me minus 5x, minus 7. Okay, now when we have three things in the second bracket, same thing. Okay, so again, write down the second bracket twice. So that'll be 3a squared minus 2a minus 7. And split up the first bracket. So this then will be... 2a by 3a squared 
minus 2a by minus 2a plus 2a. Sorry, it should be plus, plus 2a multiplied by minus 7. And then plus 1 by 3a squared plus 1 by minus 2a plus 1 by minus 7. Okay, so I did that by that and so on. And then the same thing here. Okay, I can do quite a bit of multiplying out here. So 2a multiplied by 3a squared, 2 by 3 is 6, and then a by a squared is a cubed. I need to learn that off by heart. Then we have 2 multiplied by minus 2, that will give me minus 4, and a by a will be a squared. And then we have 2 multiplied by 2a multiplied by minus 7, that will give me minus 14a. Then 1 multiplied by 3a squared, that's giving me 3a squared. 1 multiplied by minus 2a, that'll give me minus 2a. And then 1 multiplied by minus 7 will give me minus 7. Okay, now while here, can I simplify? I can see I have a squareds and a squareds. So the, we've only 1a cubed, so that'll stay the same. So we have 6a cubed. Then we have minus 4a squared plus 3a squared. Minus 4 plus 3 will give me minus 1a squared. Then we have minus 14a minus 2a. That'll be minus 16. A, okay, definitely check it on the calculator because people tend to make small numerical mistakes with that, okay? And it's a little annoying to lose marks for that, so just always check that on the calculator. And then we're our only constants, our only um, term without a variable is minus 7. So that will stay as minus 7. Okay, and our last example, okay, this is another thing you need to learn off. So if you have bracket to be squared, the easiest way to do it is we're just going to write it out twice. So 2a, 2y plus 3 by 2y plus 3. Okay, kind of just think of it in real life terms. So if you have four squared, okay, the answer is 16. How do you get that? It's four by four. Okay, so here we're doing the same thing. We'll just write out the bracket twice. Okay, now we're back to example four and five with two brackets being multiplied together. So just write down the second bracket twice. Now here they're both the same. We'll just stick with our same rule and split up the first bracket. Okay, so that's going to give me 2y by 2y plus 2y by 3 plus 3 by 2y plus 3 by 3. I'm going to multiply that out. That will give me 4y squared, 2y by 2y. Then 2y by 3 will give me 6y. Um, 3 by 2y will give me 6y as well. And then 3 by 3 will be 9. Simplify that a little bit. Then I'm going to get 4y squared plus 12y plus nine is my answer. Okay, so you can see algebra really builds on each other. So we need it to be able to do the simplifying to be able to simplify or to finish these questions. Okay, a few key things there. Um, now, what I will say is you can, once you get good at these, you can start to shorten things down. Okay, so you could definitely be skipping. Um, you see this line here. Okay, so you do not have to write that down. Okay, once you can see you're multiplying three by two and three by one, and then minus 7 by 2 and minus 7 by 1, okay? Sometimes writing it out fully actually confuses people more, okay? So whatever way works for you, as long as you're getting out the right answer, it really doesn't matter um, what way you approach it. So the next section is solving. So whenever a question says solve, basically what you want is you want x equal to a number. Okay, now, it may not always be x. If your question is y, isn't it? It'll be y is equal to a number, okay? Key thing is, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other, okay? You'll see what we do here um, and how we write it out, but whatever you do to one side, you must do the same thing to the other side, okay? And essentially, you want our x at one side of the equals and the numbers at the other, okay? So there's a bit of organisation involved in this, um, particularly when we see example three and four, okay? So first question here, we have 5x is equal to 20, now there's two ways to think about it, okay? X is a number. So five multiplied by what is equal to 20? Five multiplied by four. So X is four. Now, it won't always be as obvious as that. So what we're gonna do, we have five X is equal to 20. Right now, this five is being multiplied by the X, okay? To get rid of that five, what we need to do is we need to divide both sides by five, okay? So five divided by five, that will cancel out. So you end up with x is equal to 20 divided by 5, which is 4, okay? That's the original answer we had said when we just kind of looked at the question, but it's important to know how to do it because sometimes the answer won't be that obvious. Okay, then the next one, we have 3 plus x is equal to 9. 
Now again, we're going to think of this kind of logically. So 3 plus what is equal to 9? 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. Okay, so x is 6 here. But again, it won't always be that obvious. So we're going to write it out how we would if it was a more complicated question. So what we need to do, so we have 3 plus x is equal to 9. Now we said over here we want our x at one side of the equals and the numbers at the other. So this 3 here is my problem. Okay, we want to get rid of that. So to get rid of that, what we need to do is we need to subtract 3 from both sides. So we're going to subtract 3 from this side. We're going to subtract 3 from that side. Okay, so then we end up with these. Cancel out. And we end up with x is equal to 9 minus 3, which is 6. And again, that's the answer we thought it would be before we did any algebra. Okay, so they are both fairly straightforward. We'll look at a few more tricky examples here. Sorry, that should have been an x. Okay, so we have 3 multiplied by x plus 1 is equal to 4 plus x. Okay, first thing when we see this, we're going to multiply out the bracket. So I'm going to do 3 multiplied by x, that'll be 3x. 3 multiplied by 1, that'll be plus 3, is equal to 4 plus x. Now, when I see this, again, I want all my x's on one side and I want all my numbers on the other side. So I'm going to do this step by step. I'm going to decide that I want my x's on the left-hand side. So this 3 here is a problem. Okay, how do I get rid of that 3? I subtract 3 from both sides. So 3 minus 3. They'll cancel out. So we'll be left with 3x is equal to 4 minus 3. So 4 minus 3 will give me 1 plus x. Okay, now again, still have a problem because I don't want any x's at this side. I need to get rid of that x. So to get rid of that x, we're going to subtract x and we'll do the same thing to the other side. So what we end up then, 3x minus x will be 2x. x minus x that'll cross out is equal to 1. Okay, now if 2x is equal to 1, that's 2 multiplied by x is equal to 1. <coughs> so to get rid of that 2, we need to divide both sides by 2. That'll disappear, so then it'll be x is equal to a half. Okay, so we couldn't really have predicted that answer like we did the first two because there was a bit more involved in it. Okay, last one now exactly the same thing. First we're going to multiply out our brackets. So it'll be 5 by 2x and 5 by minus 1. 5 by 2x will be 10x. 5 by minus 1 is minus 5. It's equal to 2 by 6, which is 12x. And 2 by minus 3, which is minus 6. Plus 4x minus 2. Now, first I'm going to look at the left-hand side and I'll tidy that up a little bit. So it'll be 12x plus 4x. That'll be 16x. Minus 6 minus 2. Be careful. Put that into your calculator. It's minus 8. Okay, again now... We need to organise this. We want x's at one side and numbers on the other side. So first problem here, we get rid of this minus 5. Okay, to get rid of a minus 5, we want to make it 0. So you need to add 5. So we'll add 5 to this side. So we'll need to do the same thing to that side. So then we'll end up with 10x is equal to 16x. 8 minus 8 plus 5 would be minus 3. Okay, now we're nearly there, but we have an x at this side that we don't really want. So I need to get rid of this 16x. To make that 0, we need to subtract 16x. So what we'll have to do to both sides is we'll have to minus 16x and minus 16x. Okay, so 10x minus 16x will be minus 6x. Minus 16x plus, plus 16x minus 16x will cancel out, so we'll be left at minus 3. Now we need to get rid of this minus 6 from in front of the x. It's being multiplied, so we do the opposite, we divide. So divide both sides by minus 6. We will end up with x is equal to minus 3 divided by minus 6. You can put that into your calculator, you'll get a half. Okay, so two answers there worked out to be a half. That's pretty coincidental. But we followed the correct methods in both. Okay, so that's solving. They don't really get much trickier than that. Okay, so you just need to follow your basic rules. It's a really common exam question. Okay, it's somewhere where you really need to be picking up marks. Okay, um... So the other type of solving that can come up is solving quadratics, okay? So a quadratic will always have an x squared, an x, and a number, okay? So here we can see these are all quadratics. This is an x squared, an x, and then just a number on its own, okay, or a constant. Here an x squared, x, and a number on its own, okay? Now, bear in mind that these may not always be x's. They could be y's or z's or a's, okay? They could be any letter. We'll just go with x now. It's the most common, okay? 
when you're asked to solve a quadratic, so anything with a squared, an x, and a constant, you always use the minus b formula, okay? This formula here, it looks kind of scary to use, but it's absolutely fine, and it's super easy to find, so you don't need to learn this off, okay? And it's actually on the cover of the formula book you were given in the exam, so you don't even need to find the right page, okay? Um, you'll always get two answers, okay? Sometimes you might have to round your answers to a certain number of decimal places or leave your answer in third form. So they'll tell you that in the question. So in two here, we'll be rounding and then in three, we're leaving it in third form. That means to leave a square root, but we'll see that in a second. Now, you can also do some of these questions by factorising, okay? Um, but the formula is usually easier and that's the way I'd go for. We still need to know how to factorise quadratics. We'll look at that in a minute. But I would say that the solving is easier with the minus b formula. So say you're given this question one, x squared plus eight x plus 15 is equal to zero. You see it's a quadratic. The first thing you write in is your minus b formula, okay? So then you've shown the examiner you know what formula to use, okay? Then we're gonna mark in our a, b, and c. So a is the number in front of the x squared, b is the number in front of the x, and c is the number on its own. Now here, there's no number in front of the x squared, so we're gonna write a one in there. So a is equal to one, b is equal to eight, and c is equal to 15. Now we're going to sub those into our formula. So we're going to say that x is equal to minus b, so minus 8, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 8 to be squared minus 4 by 1 by 15, all over 2 multiplied by a, so that'll be 2 multiplied by 1. Now we're just going to tie this up a little bit before we put it into our calculator. So 8 plus or minus. Now what I'm going to put into my calculator here. Okay, I'm just going to put in the bit that's underneath the square root without the square root. So in my calculator, okay, without the square root, I'm going to put in 8 to be squared minus 4 by 1 by 5. And I get out 44. Sorry, by 15. Sorry. 15. Sorry, I'll get out square root of 4. Okay, all over. See this plus or minus here? That's going to be important. So take two separate arrows. And I'm going to put this into my calculator now. I'm going to press the fraction button first. And then minus 8. And I'm going to choose plus first. So I'm going to choose, say minus 8 plus the square root of 4 all over 2. Because 2 by 1. 1 is 2. And I get out x is equal to minus 3. Okay. That's one of my answers. I said we'd always get two answers. So now we need to change that plus sign to a minus. So you have two options. You can use your arrow buttons and your calculator to go up, delete that plus and change it to a minus, or just start again. When you have the minus there, you get out x is equal to minus five. Okay, now be very careful that you practice using the calculator. Okay, it's really no use just watching me doing it and getting out the answers if you can't do it on your calculator yourself. Okay, so make sure you practice that. Now, Next one here, exactly the same thing, except we're going to be rounding your answers to decimal places. So we see it's quadratic, the first thing, we'll write down our formula. Okay, remember you can get marks for that. Okay, if everything goes wrong after that, you're still after picking up some attempt marks. Okay, so we're gonna say that A is the number in front of X squared, which is four. B is the number in front of X. Remember, we can write a one there, so B is minus one. And C is the number on its own, so C is minus 13. So we're gonna say X is equal to, now, this is where they catch people out, okay? so. From the formula there's a minus b okay so we have minus minus one okay so we have our minus sign from the formula and then we have our minus sign from our equation plus or minus the square root of b squared which is minus one to b squared minus four by a which is four by c which is minus 13 all over two by four so x is equal to minus one so minus by a minus gives me a plus. So that'll be one plus or minus the square root. Now, again, I'm gonna put the numbers that are under the square root, so just this, into my calculator without the square root. So I'm gonna say minus one to be squared minus four by four by minus 13. So it's the square root of 209. Right. All over two by four, which is eight. Okay, so I try and move things up here to give myself a little bit more space. Okay, now, so we do our arrows going both directions. So first we'll put in the plus, so press the fraction button first in your calculator. So then we'll put in 1 plus the square root of 209 all over 8. 
press the SD button to make that a decimal and to one decimal place I get 1.9. Okay, then the other side, we're going to go up and change that plus to a minus. And press the SD button to change it to a decimal. I get X is equal to minus 1.68. Now, carefully, we want it to one decimal place. So that's X is equal to minus 1.7. Okay, because the number after the 6 is bigger than 5. So we're going to round up. Okay, two answers. X is equal to 1.9 and x is equal to minus 1.7, okay? And then finally, they could say they want their answer inserted for. So again, same thing, we're gonna write down our formula, okay? And then we'll write down our a, b, and c. So a is the number in front of the x squared, so a is equal to nine, b is the number in front of the x, so minus 10, and c is the number on its own, so two. So we have x is equal to minus from our formula, and then we have our minus 10, they do that trick a lot, so be careful that you put in the two minuses and that you know they change to a plus. Um, b squared, so minus 10. To be squared, make sure you put that in a bracket when you're putting it into your calculator. Minus 4 by 9 by 2, all over 2 by 9. Okay, tie that up a little bit. x equal to minus by a minus will be plus 10, plus or minus square root. And again, in my calculator, I'm putting in 10, minus 10 to be squared. Make sure you put that in a bracket. Minus four by nine by two. And I get out 28. So square root of 28 all over 18. Okay, so just gonna mess up a little bit. So we'll do plus first. So we have x is equal to, so I went into my calculator, press the fraction button, and I'm gonna press 10 plus the square root of 28 all over 18. Now I get five plus root seven all over nine. Okay, now the question said in third form, third form means they want a square root somewhere in your answer. Okay, so I'm not gonna change that. I'm not gonna press the SD button to change it into a decimal. I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, I know it looks a little bit messy, but that's how they want their answer. And the same thing then, I'm gonna go up and change that plus sign that I have to a minus. So it'll be 10 minus the square root of 28 all over 18. And I get X is equal to five minus square root of seven all over nine. Okay, so that's the minus b formula. It comes up quite a bit. Um, it will also come up in a second when we do fractions. Okay, so be, make sure you know how to do it and make sure you know how to use your calculator. Okay, so when I'm doing it there, you should go back, rewind the video and follow along. Make sure you're putting it into your calculator. Now, moving on to factorizing. So on the junior cycle course, there's four different types of factorizing. Now the question won't tell you which one to use. So the question will just say factorize whatever. Then you need to decide if it's highest common factor, grouping, a quadratic trinomial, or just, just, we can just call it quadratic, or the difference of two squares. Now, this is the summary sheet. Okay, I'd advise pausing here and maybe writing down the key bits from this. Okay, this is super important. If you can do all of these examples, you can do the whole section. Okay, so first, how do you recognize it? Okay, so highest common factor usually has two terms and basically none of the other methods will work. Okay, so this is kind of your last resort. Okay, grouping then, super easy to recognize because it always has four terms. Okay, so there's always four parts to it. Okay, so this is an example here. There's four bits to that. Okay, just a note, you need to be able to do highest common factor before you can do grouping. So when you're studying them, you need to study them in order. Okay, then a quadratic trinomial always has three terms. Okay, so it'll always have an x squared, an x, and a number. Okay, um, I would say this is the most difficult type. There's steps. We'll go through the steps in a minute for how to do them. And then finally, difference of two squares always has two terms. There's always a minus sign in the middle, and the numbers will be square numbers. So then any, you're looking out for the numbers 1, 4, um, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, okay, dot, 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 okay, why are these my square numbers? Because this is 1 squared, this is 2 to be squared, this is 3 to be squared, okay, you can take, continue on that pattern there, okay, so four different types, we need to be able to recognize them, we'll go through one or two examples of each now, okay, but you have a set of examples here, so pause it, maybe 
try the examples yourself if you think you know how to do it or else we'll go through the examples on the next page and then you can come back to this and make sure you can understand these examples as well. So factorize the following that's all the question will say it'll just say factorize. So first question is x squared 10x squared plus 2x. So I look at that and I say okay it has two terms so it's either a highest common factor or a difference of two squares it doesn't have a minus in the middle so then immediately it's highest common factor. So I ask myself, what's the biggest number that will divide into 10 and 2? Okay, biggest number that will divide into 10 and 2 is 2. Does it have any letter in common? Okay, so it has an x squared in one and an x in the other. Okay, so there is an x in common in both. So we're going to write down our x there and we're going to open our brackets. Now, we need two numbers to go here and here. Okay, first question you ask is, what would you multiply 2x by to get 10x squared? So to go from 2 to 10, you'd multiply by 5. And to go from x to x squared, you'd multiply by x. Okay. And then what would you multiply 2x by to get 2x? Okay, just multiply by 1. So we put in a plus 1 there. Okay, that's highest common factor. And um, we're going to see that again now in the grouping. But um, that's basically it. Okay, highest common factor is probably the most straightforward one. Example two, then we see there's four terms in it, so there's four bits, four bits that has to be grouping. Okay, so what we do is we take the first two together, and then we take the second two together. With the first two, we're going to do highest common factor again. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the second two. So what we're going to ask ourselves is, what is the biggest number that will divide into three and six? The biggest number that will divide into three and six is three. Any letter in common, they both have a B in common. Then we'll open our brackets and we need two things to go in our bracket. So we have 3B, but we need to make 3AB. So what would you multiply 3B by to get 3AB? You'd multiply it by A. And then we have 3B, but we want to make minus 6BY. So to go from 3 to minus 6, you'd multiply by minus 2. And we're also missing the Y. Okay, now we'll do exactly the same thing with the second half of it. So you have ax minus 2xy. Now at this point again there's no number in front so I'm going to write in a 1 there just to help me a little bit. So what's the biggest number that will divide into 1 and 2? biggest number that will divide into 1 and minus 2 is 1. And any letter in common they both have an x in common. So we have 1x but we want to make 1ax. What's missing? We have an a missing. And then we have 1x but we want to make minus 2xy so we need to put in a minus 2y. Okay, now what you notice here is that our two brackets are the same. Okay, if your brackets are not the same, you've probably made a mistake or you might need to reorder the question if it's a really tricky example. But these two brackets have to be the same. So a minus 2y, a minus 2y have to be the same thing. Okay, and then our final step, which people sometimes forget, we're going to put this and this together. So the 3b plus 1x, a bracket, and then a minus 2y in a separate bracket. Okay, so that's our grouping. You need to be able to do highest common factor to be able to do grouping, okay? And just make sure the key point there is that the two brackets are the same. Now, we're gonna see grouping again now in our quadratic, okay? So for a quadratic, there's a little method that you need to learn that works, okay? Um, some people can do it just by seeing the answer. That's great if you can, but if you can't, or when the questions get a bit more tricky, knowing this method is handy. So again, I'm gonna put a one in front of this x squared here. So step one, I'm going to multiply the number in front of the x squared by the number on its own. So one multiplied by seven is equal to seven. Okay, now I'm going to write down the factors of seven. So what numbers could I multiply together to give me seven? So I could have um, seven and one. Or I could have minus seven and minus one. Okay, because my two minuses together will make a positive. Okay, now I need to pick one of these, okay? I need to pick the ones that will add to give me 8x. Okay, 7 plus 1 will add to give me 8x. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite my question, but instead of writing 8x, I'm going to add 7x plus 1x. So our new question is 1x squared plus 7x plus 1x plus 7. Now, we're back to a grouping question because there's four terms. The first two together and the second two together. So biggest number that will divide into 1 and 7 is 1. 
what letter they have in common. So they both have an x. Okay, one is an x squared, one is an x. So we'll take out an x. We have one x, but we want to make one x squared. So you'll multiply that by x. And we have one x, but we want to make seven x. So you'd multiply that by seven. Okay, same thing here now. Biggest number that'll divide into one and seven would be one. No letter in common. We have one, but we want to make one x. So you'd multiply by one, or you multiply by one x, sorry. And then you have one and you want to make seven, so you'd multiply by seven. We see that our brackets are the same, so we know we're correct. So just to finish up then, it'll be one x plus one and x plus seven as our final answer. And okay, make sure you don't forget that final answer. Okay, question four, three terms again, so it's another quadratic. We'll follow the same system, okay? So multiply the number in front of the x by the number on its own. So three multiplied by minus five. So three multiplied by minus five is equal to minus 15. Okay, now we're going to write down the factors of minus 15. So to get a minus number, we need to multiply a positive number by a negative number. So we could have 15 multiplied by minus one. We could have um, minus one multiplied by 15. We could have minus three multiplied by five or minus five multiplied by three. Okay, now I need to look at these because I need to pick out a pair that will give me minus two X. Okay, 15 minus one won't work. Minus one plus 15 won't work. Minus three plus five will give me two X. I don't want two X, I want minus two X, but minus five plus three, okay will give me the minus 2x, so that's going to be the pair I'm going to choose. So we're going to write out our question, so we'll have 3x squared, and instead of writing that minus 2x, we're going to write minus 5x plus 3x minus 5. Usually it doesn't matter what order you put those in. Okay, and now we're back to grouping, so we're going to take the first two together and then the second two together. Biggest number that will divide into 3 and 5 is 1. Any letter in common, they both have an x. So we have 1x, we want to make 3x squared, so you multiply by 3x. We have one x we want to make minus five, so you'd multiply it by minus five. Okay, and same thing again here. Biggest number that'll divide into three and minus five will be plus one. No letter in common. Go from one to three x, you multiply it by three x. To go from one to minus five, you'd multiply it by minus five. Our brackets are the same, so then just write down your answer is one x plus one and three x minus five. Okay, so I would say there the quadratic is the most difficult type of question. Okay, if you can do both of those examples, you have it. You may have a different method of using. That's absolutely fine. As long as you're getting out the right answer, the examiner doesn't mind. Okay, and as long as you're showing your work. Okay, and the last two. So I look at this, okay, and I say, okay, there's two terms. So it could be difference of two squares or it could be highest common factor. I look at the numbers in the first one. Okay, they're both on the list. So they're both square numbers and there's a minus in the middle. So it's going to be um, difference of two squares. So we're going to get the square root of 9 and we're going to get the square root of 25. Okay, so instead of writing 9x squared, square root of 9 is equal to 3 and square root of 25 is equal to 5. You can check those in your calculator. So this would be 3x all to be squared and 5 to be squared. Okay, and now you just write 3x plus 5, so 1 plus the other, and then 3x minus 5. Okay, it's probably the easiest one actually out of the lot of them after you recognise it. Okay, same thing here. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. Square root of 1 is equal to 1. Okay, not highest common factor because we have square numbers and we have a minus in the middle. So instead of writing 4y squared, we write 2y to be squared, minus 1 to be squared, and then 2y plus 1 and 2y minus 1. Okay, so that's a quick run through of factorising. I can't emphasise enough how important it is to learn which type of factorising to use when. Okay, so this factorising summary here is super, super important. I'd advise pausing and writing down the key points from that, especially how to recognise each one. Okay, because that's the most common problem that students find with this. So now we're moving on, we're going to see our first type of fractions. Okay, so there's a few different types of for, of algebraic fractions, this is the first one. So if you're given a single fraction, okay, like what we have here, okay, and you're told to simplify it, what we do, we look at the top and we look at the bottom, and all we do is factorize, okay? So this is why factorizing is super important. It can come up as a question on its own, or it can come up as a fraction question. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the top separately, and I see the top is x squared minus 5x plus 6. That is a quadratic, 
Okay, so time here again now. I have the solution done out there. Pause the video and make sure you get the same answer that I do. Okay, so the top is quadratic. The bottom then, 3x minus 9. Okay, I think two terms now. So it's either highest common or difference of two squares. 3 is a square number. So it is highest common factor. So we can pull out a 3 from both bits. Okay, now I put my top and bottom back together. And something should cancel. So we notice there's an x minus 3 on top and on bottom. Just cross them out and you will be left with a 1x minus 2 all over 3. Okay, second example, very similar again. We're given a single fraction and the question would say simplify. Okay, so we take the top. We notice the top, okay, two terms. So it's either highest common factor or difference of two squares. I look at both those numbers. They're both square numbers. There's a minus in the middle. The y is squared. So everything is pointed to difference of two squares. So I do that there. And then the bottom, okay, now with the bottom, there's nothing really you could factorize out of it, okay? I factorize out a one just to show, but you don't have to do that, okay? But if you prefer, you can always factorize out a one out of everything. Okay, so one is the biggest number that will divide into three and five. Then I put my fraction back together. So I'm gonna put this on top and this on bottom. And we notice we have a three y plus five on top and on bottom, so we can cross those out. We're left with three y minus five over one probably get away with that but there's no need to write the one on the bottom of a fraction okay so the one at the bottom of a fraction doesn't actually do anything so our answer there is just 3y minus 5 okay so nothing new there on that slide um just make sure you can do the factorizing okay and if you're asked to simplify a single fraction factorize where you can and if you do that correctly something should cancel now moving on to adding and subtracting fractions okay sometimes people find this tricky i'm going to show you a way to write it out that might help a little okay um, it involves arrows, so hopefully this will help. So if we want to add 3x minus 1 over 2 plus 4x plus 1 all over 5. Now, up here in the right-hand corner, we see, we see to add or subtract, we need the bottom of the fractions to be the same. So right now we have a 2 and a 5 on bottom. That's not going to work, okay? So what I need to do is I need to think, what is the lowest common multiple of 2 and 5? So we're looking for a common denominator. So what number will 2 and 5 be? Well, like what number will work for both 2 and 5, okay? What number will 2 and 5 both divide into? They'll both divide into 10. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write my original fractions, but I'm just going to change the bottoms to 10. Okay, now, obviously that's not allowed, okay? I've broken a load of rules there, so I need to fix this up a little bit. So I change this 2 to a 10. Okay, now you can't magically do that. So how did I actually do it? I multiplied by 5. So whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Okay, so we're going to put that in a bracket and put a 5 out in front of it. Okay, then same for the other one. This 5 magically became a 10. You can't just do that, so we multiply by 2. So we'll do the same thing to the top. Okay, once you get to that stage then, we rewrite our fraction. But we can just put it all over one fraction because it's the same. So it'll be 5 by 3x minus 1 plus 2 by 4x plus 1, all over 10. Multiply at the top, so that'll be 15x minus 5 plus 8x plus 2, all over 10, which is um, 15 plus 8 will be 23x minus 5 plus 2 will be minus 3, all over 10. Okay, and that's our final answer. So using those arrows can help. Just remember, whatever you do to the bottom of the fraction, you have to do to the top of the fraction as well. Okay, we're going to do question two here. So we have 3x plus 4 over 4 minus 2x minus 3 all over 2. So you need to be a little bit careful here. There's a few minus signs that might catch us out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do the same approach. So what number will work? So what number will 4 and 2 divide into? Or what's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 2? The answer is 4. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite both my fractions and I'm going to put a 4 on the bottom of both. Okay, now... For the first fraction here, going from here to here, nothing changed with the bottom, so I don't have to change anything with the top. Second part though, going from two to four, we need to multiply by two, so I'm gonna have to do the same thing to the top. Okay, now when we get both of the bottom of the fraction or the denominator is the same, we can just rewrite it as one fraction, so it'll be three x plus four minus two by two x minus three all over 4, which is 3x plus 4. Now, minus 2 multiplied by 2x will be minus 4x, and minus 2 multiplied by minus 3 will be plus 6. All over 4, 
which will equal 3x minus 4x will be minus 1x, 4 plus 6 will be plus 10, all over 4. So there's my answer for that. Okay, so you can see exactly the same thing there, just be a little bit more careful of the minus sign. Now, slightly different here. So we saw in number 1 and 2, we had algebra on bottom, so we could figure out what number, what the common denominator is. If there's algebra on bottom, we can't actually figure out a number that will work for both. Okay, so all we do is we multiply them together. So on the bottom of this fraction, I'm going to write x minus 2 multiplied by 2 minus x. Okay, I'm going to pop my 11 back there like it was. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So on the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to write both of the brackets. I'm going to put the 2 back on top there. Now, again, different colors. We're going to use our arrows. Okay. So to go from here to here, there was originally an x minus 2, and now suddenly there's an x minus 2 and a 2 minus x. Okay, so we'll write what's new on the bottom there. You need to do the same thing to the top. So we're going to have to multiply the top by 2 minus x. And similarly with the other one, so there was a 2 minus x originally on the bottom. Suddenly there's a 2 minus x, but there's also an x minus 2. So we'll have to do the same thing to the top. We'll do x minus 2. Okay, now when we have the bottom of the fraction the same, we can um, just squish them together. Sorry, now I'm going to make a little bit more space here. Come up with it. Okay, so we will have 11 by 2 minus x plus 2 by x minus 2 all over. Now, a trick here, you don't have to multiply at the bottom of the fraction. Okay, it's actually better if you don't, you don't get any marks for it, so there's no point in doing it. Okay, so we'll just multiply out the top. So 11 by 2 will be 22. 11 by minus x will be minus 11x. Uh, 2 by x will be plus 2. And 2 by minus 2 will be minus 4. And we'll leave the bottom the same. And then we'll just tidy up the top a little bit. We put our x's together. Sorry, there should be an x there. So minus 11x plus 2x will be minus 9x. 22 minus 4 will be plus 18. All over x minus 2 and 2 minus x. Okay, so really important um, examples there. Okay, so they're for simplifying, so adding or subtracting fractions, and then as a result, simplifying them. Okay, just make sure whatever you do to the bottom, you also have to do to the top. I find that arrow method really useful. I find that people tend to make less mistakes when they see the arrows. Okay, so it would be a good uh, place to start there with the arrows. Make sure you can follow where all those numbers come from. Okay, um, and we'll see a few more examples then when we look at the exam question at the end. Okay, now the last thing that can come up in fractions, so we've seen the simplifying fractions where you just factorize, that's if you're given a single fraction. We're given um, another example there where we're adding or subtracting fractions. But now we are, sorry, that shouldn't say simplifying, that should say solve. Okay, we'll end up simplifying it anyway, but we'll also be solving it, okay? So what we're gonna do, solve, we know from earlier. So solve always means we want x equal to a number. So at the end of this, we'll have x equal to something. Okay, basically what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we were doing when we were adding or subtracting the fractions to get the bottoms the same. Okay, when we do that, then we could ignore them all. We'll see that when we get there. So I have the numbers 3, 6 and 2 at the bottom. I want a number that will work for all of them. So I want the lowest common multiple of 3, 6 and 2. Okay, so I can turn all those numbers into a 6 quite easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Again, I've broken quite a lot of rules there. So I need to go back and I need to unbreak those rules. So this was a three and it suddenly became a six. Okay, so to go from three to six, we multiply by two. So we're gonna to have to do the same thing to the top. Okay, here we went from six to six, nothing changed. So we don't have to do anything with that. Okay, we could put a one there if we want. Okay, so we multiply by one, but multiplying by one doesn't really do anything. And to go from the 2 to the 6 here, we multiply it by 3. So we're going to have to multiply the top by 3. Okay, so the same idea. Whatever you multiply it by the bottom, you need to multiply by the top. Now, this is what I'm talking about by ignoring the bottom. We have 6 on the bottom, 6 on the bottom, 6 on the bottom. When all the bottoms are the same and you're solving, what you can actually do is you can just ignore it. Okay, so we're just going to write out the top line. So it'll be 2 by 7x minus 1 minus 1 by 2x plus 5 is equal to 3 by minus 3. 2 by 7x would be 14x minus 2 minus 2x minus 5 is equal to minus 9. 
Okay, we're going to tidy up the left-hand side, the 14x and the 2x. 14x minus 2x would be 12x. And then minus 2 minus 5, I definitely did that in my calculator, that would be minus 7. Is equal to minus 9. Now, we need to get rid of this minus 7. Okay, so we want x in its own, so we need to get rid of that minus 7. How are we going to get rid of that minus 7? We will add 7 to both sides. Okay, so we'll have 12x minus 7. We're going to plus 7 is equal to minus 9 plus 7. Okay, you may have been taught to think about that differently. So you may have been taught that you just bring it over the other side and it changes to a plus. Whatever way you've been taught or whatever way you understand it. But what I'm going to explain it is you add 7 to both sides. Okay, so they're going to cancel out. So we'll get 12x is equal to minus 9 plus 7. Minus 9 plus 7 would be minus 2. Okay, which leaves us with 12x equal to minus 2. To get rid of that 12, we divide both sides by 12, which gives us x is equal to minus 1 sixth as our answer there. Okay, so what we did there was relatively straightforward, very like the last ones. Okay, you just have the bit of solving at the end. OK, that's your only real difference there. OK, so let's leave that up there for a second just so you can um, take that down um, and make sure you're understanding where all those numbers are coming from. OK, if your algebra is a little bit rusty from solving, OK, you need to spend more time in the solving. So you can probably see now how much it all catches up um, if you kind of fall behind in any of this. OK, so that's the last thing we're going to do. Now it's going to show you an exam question. So this is the 22 uh, 2022 junior search exam question okay as you can see it had a part a b and c and it kind of has a little bit of everything in it okay so what we'd be expecting in the algebra question would that be a test kind of a broad area of your algebra okay so the first part is factorize second part then was simplifying a fraction okay so adding or subtracting fractions okay like that would be very like the last example we did here where we had algebra on bottom okay so extremely like that you'll follow the same method and then the last part is solving the equation. So it's solving a quadratic. We're going to use the minus b formula for that. OK, so my advice would be to pause there. OK, in a second, then I'm going to put up the exam question or the exam question solution. OK, so pause here. Try your best with it. Um, this is the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. So try this question. If you can do these parts, then you've learned a load. OK, then you're probably fairly strong at algebra. Um, really important that we get good at algebra. OK, so give this question a go. Um, and I'll put up the solution there at the end of the video. Okay, thanks for listening and best of luck with your study of algebra.